Good afternoon, and welcome to our time of prayer and remembrance. Thank you for being here. It is good for us to be together as a community today. As the Christians among us begin this Holy Week, and our Jewish sisters and brothers continue the celebration of Passover, we pause during these sacred days to acknowledge the pain, the grief, and the loss that this year has held due to the coronavirus. March marks one year since COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. And we mourn and pray for the nearly 2.8 million beautiful lives lost throughout our world. Nearly 550,000 of those deaths here in the United States. And in a particular way this afternoon, we raise up and remember those known to and loved by members of our Chestnut Hill College community. We remember too the millions who continue to be affected by this global health crisis, especially those who are impacted disproportionately, women, of, women and men of color, and those who are most impoverished throughout the world. May our awareness of these disparities move our hearts to action for justice. We pray in gratitude for healthcare workers and all those on the front lines whose dedication and resilience have inspired us and have helped us to keep moving forward. We pray for their continued health and safety. For those in this community who supported others in their time of loss and need, and for all those who saw needs and quietly responded to them, we are grateful. We pray for rapid and equitable distribution of the vaccine, and we long for a time when we can gather again in the fullness of this amazing community. And so let us be still and recognize that God is here. As you are coming into this time of prayer, you heard the first version of our opening song called Shelter Me, which is a paraphrase of Psalm 23 by Father Michael Jonkis, who's a prominent and longtime American composer of liturgical music. This hymn was composed for this time of pandemic, and it truly is a new hymn of trust and hope in our God. The hymn's first and third verses speak about intimacy with God in the past and in the future. And the refrain reminds us that all will be well according to God's loving mercy. Father Jonkis notes, these are difficult times for all of us individually and globally. This pandemic has called for acts of corporate and individual heroism in the face of present suffering and an uncertain future. People of faith may be struggling to articulate their belief in an all good and all powerful God in this new era. He continued, shelter me is my attempt as a church composer to find God's presence even in these fraught times. It is his hope that people will be able to sing the song with sincerity as a way of affirming their faith in God during these troubled times. Many groups have used this song for prayer during this last year. And Mark Ermson, one of our alums, put together this video of our community praying with this song. Thank you. 
If we have grown weary in this season, if we have become overwhelmed, if we are living with fear or anxiety or worry about what lies ahead, if the swirl of Holy Week has become intense, if time is moving strangely, if grief has been a traveling companion, if the ground beneath us has given away, if resurrection seems less than certain, This whole year has felt like a Lent, a Holy Week in many ways, many people living in a place of Holy Saturday, a space of waiting in grief. We are a world yearning for resurrection, for the light to lift the shadows of isolation and fear. And as a Holy Saturday people, we cannot race ahead to rolling away the stone Our attention is here in this holy day, this holy week, this holy time of mourning and healing and remembering. And so we gather for this service planned intentionally during this Christian week, and we turn to Christ's passion, Christ's movement from friendship and community at the table to agony and death, to the dark tomb, to the promise of new life and resurrection. Our faith tells us death is never the end of the story. This poem, What Abides, What Returns, written by Jan Richardson, is inspired by the words, anticipate resurrection. Our God will not be outdone in generosity. And so we lean forward with hope this week, trusting the movement of Christ's journey and to trusting the movement of our own lives. In a season of stunning sun, we have chosen the only day of rain. And so we shelter on this porch, each with a cup in hand, and in our heart, a hole in the precise shape of our beloved. I have not come here to compare notes, widow to widow, that untimely word still harsh in my ear, but simply to sit together in the stillness, at the edge of the wound, the sound of our voices a testament to what endures, to the unbearable somehow born, Easter draws near as we watch the rain. We know the drama and the pageantry that lie ahead, the commotion that is owed to such a miracle. Meanwhile, we go on quietly raising the dead, tending them as more than a memory, learning to live in the curious marriage of absence and presence that settles into the bones and the aching but durable heart. We know resurrection as something not merely to be anticipated, but also daily lived as we reckon with what abides, what returns of the beloved who cannot be unknown, who having passed into us will not so easily shed. Still, I think of Mary Magdalene and the secret she carried when she left that empty tomb, how resurrection is a strange dance of reunion and relief, how our loving will always ask of us a letting go. Yet in the asking a promise that what we love knows how to find us, even by the path that will bear us far away from here. And with immense gratitude, we thank Chloe Youngblood for her personal reflection on the death of her dad, Anthony. 
Hi, my name is Chloe Youngblood. I am 17 years old and I'm a freshman at Chestnut Hill College. And um, campus ministry asked me to take part of the prayer and remnant service on this, for this week. And I am gladly to be a part of it because I definitely want to share a remembrance of a godly man. And that is my dad. Um, my dad recently passed away on February the 14th of this year. Yeah, quite sad. Um, so, my family, it's me, my mom, my two brothers, and it was my dad. My dad was, well, when you see him, like, when you, like, when you see him, it would be the definition of just a man of God. And you could totally see Christ in him if you saw him. He was God-fearing man. Everything that he did, he did it for Christ. He showed love to many, and he cared for his family. He cared for his wife. He cared for his children. And I am very much thankful to call him my father. Um, me and my dad had a close relationship. My dad took me on dates. He taught me how to drive. And he would even sing songs to me. Uh, one memory that I have comes with a beautiful lesson about how a man should treat a woman. So one time, me and my dad was on a daddy daughter date, and he was telling me about how a man should treat a woman. He said a man should love a woman like Christ loves the church, and how a woman honestly shouldn't be doing nothing. <laughs> He, like, and that's what he did. He didn't really allow my mom to do anything. He would do everything and everything that was his love that he showed to my mom. And he said, like, a man needs to do that to you, too. And he's also told me that when a man loves you, if a guy, a man loves you, he will pursue you. And so he, and he would just talk about that and it was just a blessing. And he also said, like, oh, a woman should not open the car door. <laughs> she should not open any doors. And a man should definitely be there, open the door, and being a gentleman. And, you know, that's a big lesson for me, especially how a man, a young man, should treat me. And, um, and how a man should act in love. And so I found that please that advice is very wonderful and I hope that helps a lot of other young girls about how a man should treat them um my dad was very much faith-filled uh, like my entire family is as I noticed that he that was I shared he did everything for Christ he was a scripture that says for me to live is Christ and to die is gain he did everything in love he did everything for the glory of God and he truly showed servant leadership um, and I want to do the same as well I want to show servant leadership exactly like my dad did even if somebody was like sad or mad or whatever my dad <laughs> will show them love and will still treat them with respect and with love and that's important it's very much important to show God's love to everybody. You know, even if they're having a bad day, showing God's love can definitely brighten somebody's day. And I saw that what my dad did. Um, as I referenced earlier, uh, we had a little joke. I used to call him old man and he responds back, oh, I'm all purpose man. I can tell you this, he definitely was an all purpose man. He did everything in purpose and it shows, especially how much for how we're missing him. He did a lot of things of purpose with love, and I'm thankful for everything that he did and taught, and how he was saying to me and the love of my mom. It was truly a blessing, and I will miss him. Um, I hope this 
brings a lot of people closer to faith. And as we remember others, may God be with you and blessed to you. We thank Chris, who's with us in this service today, for his reflection, his experience of walking alongside so many in our community. Through the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have been profoundly affected by so many instances and encounters that remind us of our capacity and opportunity to support one another and to persevere in spite of challenges that will always be unique to this generation. The generosity, compassion, intelligence, and ingenuity manifested by so many this past year have been inspiring and very, very touching. We have been graced by those who have shared their personal stories of experiences of racial injustice to help us understand the ongoing challenges of equity and inclusion in our nation. We are supported by those who have worked together to lead us through each day of the pandemic as information about COVID-19 and its public health and economic impacts changed daily. For those of us who have taught, advised, counseled and supported students through the pandemic, sadly, many of us will remember the day when you shared with us that you had lost a loved one, a friend, a neighbor to the pandemic. And we marveled at your perseverance and dedication, doing all we could and can to support you through that experience. When asked for a scripture passage that was evocative of the whole of this experience, I found Romans chapter 12, verses three through eight, which expresses, I think, our opportunity to find both comfort and strength in identifying what we can do for others in times like these. For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you, not to think of themselves more highly than one ought to think, but to think soberly, each according to the measure of faith that God has apportioned. For as in one body we have many parts, and all the parts do not have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually parts of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given us, let us exercise them. If prophecy in proportion to the faith, if ministry in ministering, if one is a teacher in teaching, if one exhorts in exhortation, if one contributes in generosity, if one is over others with diligence, if one does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This passage serves as a reminder for me of what I observed on thousands of occasions this past year. More than people doing what they could, I witnessed students, faculty, and staff finding and giving strength by cultivating the wealth of their talents, each of us doing what we could with what we had, while being reminded that what we had, more valuable than anything else, in our homes, our families, our friends, and our college 
was the exceptional gift of one another. pray for the deceased. For the book of Revelation, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning or crying or pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. So we pray. God of all, we celebrate the mystery of your holy ones, among whom you now include our companions, who died as a result of the coronavirus, live eternally. We ask your blessings on those who have passed through the doorway of death and now share in your eternal glory. Creator God, not a sparrow falls that you do not know it. May all who now suffer with the virus find their hope in you. We remember all frontline healthcare workers who daily risk their lives for others. May their healing presence be a witness to your active, inclusive love. May you keep them safe from all harm and illness. Our companions in faith, we entrust you now to the care of St. Joseph, the patron of a peaceful death. May our beloved patron lead you into the hands of God. May you know God face to face as you once knew God in the face of the dear neighbor. God of mercy, we lift up into your divine heart our companions and ask that you grant them eternal peace and the perpetual company of your saints. May they and all the holy dead live forever in the splendor of your divine light and life. And we say, amen. And so we pray, God of infinite mercy, hear our prayer. In this time of bewilderment and fear, we ask you to give us the courage to take care of one another as Jesus did. For those who are ill, especially those who are frightened and alone, for those who cannot access health care, for those who are homeless and lost, hear our prayer. 
In the midst of our sadness and grief, we ask you to give us words to comfort one another. For those who are dying and for those who have already died from this virus, for those who tend them and for those with no one to tend them, hear our prayer. In the midst of our own anxiety, we ask you to give us the courage to support one another as you would. For those who are unexpectedly unemployed, for employers who share what they can, for our government and financial institutions and those who lead them, hear our prayer. In the midst of our struggle to ensure a healthy future for all who live on this planet, we ask you to give us the hope that surpasses our current understanding. For healthcare workers, spiritual leaders, and our faith communities, for artists and poets, for prophets and teachers, hear our prayer. In the midst of our growing awareness that all life on earth is connected, we ask for the heart to respect and cherish all life, that all peoples recognize that we are all your children. Hear our prayer. We trust in you and your power working in us. Please hear and answer our prayers. And to this we say, Amen, Amen. So we would like to thank each of you for taking your time to be with us today to pray and remember. And we wish you a blessed and holy week ahead as our journey continues toward light and hope.